Buying a new helmet is a very difficult decision to make. There are so many options, so many manufacturers, so many different shapes and sizes. Which one do I select? I'm gonna help you with that today. Stick around. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to pick the right helmet for your sport bike or your super naked bike that you own. Now, it's a very confusing process. Selecting the right helmet for you can be very confusing, frustrating as well, because you do not know which one you want to get. However, put your choices into five different categories for selecting a helmet. Once you're able to do that, it gets a lot easier for you to pick and choose what you want for yourself. So what are those categories? One, safety. Two, aerodynamics. Three, the fit four design and the five is the price so if you go ahead and break them down into five categories it gets a lot easier for you to make your decision now let me elaborate a little bit on these categories for you number one safety you always want to pick a helmet that has a very decent safety rating so there are multiple certifications other than dot that you should look out for there is FIM, which is one of the latest certifications. There is ECE and then there is Snell. You want to make sure that your helmet carries at least one of these. These are independent third party certifications that the manufacturer has to get. And they put the helmets through multiple levels of scrutiny. I'm going to probably put the link above here for you to maybe see a little bit more about these certifications and what kind of tests that they put these helmets through as well. Staying on the point of safety, you want to make sure what kind of materials go into making of the helmet that you want to buy. Most of the top line helmets today are made of carbon fiber. They not only have better strength, in terms of protection but also they're lightweight so that helps you overall as well the other two things you want to really look out for is you know one being pin lock which every manufacturer usually puts it in the box nowadays with the exception of bell and pro tint because it comes with a layered but it also helps you not get fogged especially if you're riding in cold or if it starts to rain while you're on the ride the second and and one of the most critical points that a lot of people overlook is the viewport. When I'm talking about viewport, is how much angle your helmet can still actually make you see. Because when you're riding in, you know, when you're riding a sport bike, you are looking at tucking down and riding, and you need to make sure that you have maximum visibility when you're doing that. Now, if a helmet which does not have a very big viewport is going to block your vision and that could be a recipe for disaster. So please look into a, a large viewport. And as I said, top of the line helmets, race helmets are designed for you to go fast on track. They have a very large viewport for you to be able to see a lot more when riding fast and especially under top. The next category is aerodynamics. A lot of us, we know that modern day motorcycles can reach high speeds really quickly. And the last thing you want is the wind buffeting or pushing your helmet above where it impacts with your visibility, your riding, and, and is a hindrance. So you really want to look into the helmet which have really good aerodynamic package. Like this bell does not come with external or additional spoilers, but as you can see, it does have a little bit of a spoiler at the back which helps the wind to kind of pass over smoothly and keeps it stable especially if you have a naked motorcycle you want to make sure that you have a really good aerodynamic helmet see the modern bikes can, can get up to speed really quickly as i said earlier i used to own a honda cb 1000r and my first helmet that i bought for that motorcycle it was a mid-range nex helmet which is a pretty decent brand it's a portuguese manufacturer makes pretty decent helmets however when i went on the track and i started to ride fast on the straight the helmet would start to move and not only just move sideways with the wind it would slowly start to put my head up because the helmet is literally trying to come off my head because it did not have the appropriate aerodynamics so it's extremely important to think about aerodynamics before you purchase now majority of these helmets worn by some of the other MotoGP rider or world superbike champion rider so you can trust that some of these high-end helmets that these riders wear are designed to withstand that and once I I upgraded from next to an AGV Pista GPR. It was so much better. 
there. My helmet was stable at almost speeds of 220, 240 kilometers an hour on a naked mo motorcycle. So there was a huge difference between the two. I would strongly recommend you guys, if you have a naked bike or even a sport bike where you still have some sort of a wind protection, still go in for a helmet, which is aerodynamically extremely sound. Talking about aero as well, the other thing that you want to keep in mind while these helmets are the apex predator, the best of the best that are out there, they will be extremely loud inside. Please use earplugs while you ride. It will change completely the way you, and your ears will last a lot longer. Number three, comfort or fit. Now this is something that a lot of us get it wrong. We need to make sure that the helmet A fits extremely snug. Remember, these are not your boxer shorts that you need extra breathability. This helmet has to fit extremely snug to your face. It can do its job from aerodynamics, so it stays on your head and you will have less interference when you're riding the motorcycle. If you decide and you get a loose helmet, the chances are that once it breaks in, it will start to move on your head again. It starts to move and, and that's where it gets a little tricky. This is not going to be safe. So you wanna make sure that you get a really, really snug fit when it comes to your helmet. Your cheeks should be pressed in and let's make sure that there are no hot spots. One of the things that I discovered with one of my previous helmets is that after 10 minutes, I started to get a little bit of a hot spot. Hot spot is nothing but pressure point from your helmet onto your skull. I kid you not, you cannot ride with it for more than 15 minutes. It's, it's unbearable pain and discomfort that you can get while you're riding. So you wanna make sure that your helmet fits right and right shape for your head. There are two different kinds of helmet sizes or shapes that you can get. One is a oval shape helmet and one is a round helmet. So make sure that you look into these shapes and sizes before you actually make your decision as well. I'm gonna put again a video here for you guys to kind of see, differentiate what your head shape is kind of like. That will help you to make the right decision for the helmet depending on the size and the shape of your head as well. One more thing to, to really, really pay attention to is the weight of your helmet. Some of the top end helmets would weigh somewhere between 1.3 kilograms to 1.5 kilograms. Really directly correlates to the comfort when you're riding. The heavier the helmet, the, the more stress your neck has to take. And if you're, if you're in for long rides or you, you spend too much time in the saddle throughout the day, this is definitely going to cause you discomfort over a period of time. So you wanna make sure that the weight of the helmet is as low as possible that you can get. Even something as 100 to 150 grams can make a huge difference on your, your neck muscles and the, the comfort and how long you can actually ride. So please keep that in mind. The weight of the helmet is extremely important. Number four, the design. Now, this is very, very tricky to, to actually tell somebody what design they should buy because everyone has a unique taste and everyone likes a different shape, colors, and you know, has different preferences. So when it comes to design, just go with what you like, what really strikes out for you. Everyone has their own taste. Some would like really colorful helmets. Some would like the helmets to match the motorcycle. Some would just like a full black outfit or some would like to get their favorite MotoGP rider, Valentino Rossi, Mark Marquez, whoever that might be, stick to what your gut says. Because at the end of the day, you're the one who's gonna wear it. You're the one who's gonna have it in your house, lying around, you're gonna look at it. So you wanna make sure that it's something that pleases you. Again, this is totally up to you. What you want to do, don't listen to anybody, don't listen to me on this one. Pick and choose the helmet, a design, and the color that you really, really like. That brings us to our final point price. This is very, very difficult to determine what is the right budget for you because at the end of the day, you're the one who decides what the budget is going to be like. My recommendation would be don't make a hasty decision when you're setting up your budget. And if you have set up a budget, make sure that you top it up with a little bit more. Now, majority of these helmets would range from $800 to $1,000. And then you of course have AGVs, which the Pista GPRRs are 16 to $1,800, depending on the color way. And, and that's an extremely, extremely expensive helmet as well. You wanna make sure that you have a good budget to start off with when you're buying a helmet. Remember, this is your head we're talking about. Helmets save lives. You can see so many examples of it in MotoGP. There are so many crashes that happen and having a good helmet make you safer in those particular instances. So everyone has a budget and not everyone will be able to afford an $800 or a $1,000 helmet. Try to get the 
best helmet. Don't try to save up downgrading to a lower, cheaper quality helmet. There you have it. Those were the five things that you want to keep in mind in those five, five categories. I'll put the information down in the description below. Now, I know you guys have been waiting for me to talk about helmets do I own and how they are and what are the pros and cons of some of these helmets. So I can start with my Bell Raystar helmet. This costs around $1,000. Um, it's a full carbon fiber helmet uh, with the carbon fiber weave. I'm not sure if you guys can actually see that. And it's three-tone paint which I really like which is carbon fiber gets into a little bit of uh, matte black and then followed by matte orange it has also the orange lining inside from a color combination perspective it's pretty cool the materials that Bell uses are fantastic and phenomenal it has a very big eye port so when I'm in the tuck position and I'm riding on street it really really helps me one of the best thing that I love about this helmet the pro tint visor you don't have to purchase a secondary visor and go through the whole process of changing it's a photochromatic lens as you go in the sun it gets darker and darker it'll turn completely black still pretty great visibility when it is bright outside and when you know when the sun goes down comes back and becomes this normal clear visor as well so that's a, a very very handy process there are so many times that i've gone on the rides which are in the afternoon and then i come back late in the night so this helmet solves for that some of my other helmets you have to carry an extra visor or go with a clear visor and wear sunglasses all in all comfort wise really lightweight really good airflow as well for you to keep your head cool during those hot rides hot summer rides that you may have and also in turn internally the materials are really good and one other function that i would say that this one really stands out is magnets it is a classic double d-ring but the attachments have magnets so it's just super easy for you to just clip them on with with magnet and and there you go uh, that's that's kind of done so that's my bell um, then i also have the showy x14 or x spirit 3 with an iridium visor uh, in front this is this is in the mark marquez's motegi colorway has really really cool graphics as you can see here it's got the whole samurai theme going on around it and of course the mark marquez's uh, signature and uh, also this is my track helmet most of the time i use this on track things that i really really love about this helmet is that how light it is it is lighter than the bell helmet and it is extremely comfortable when you're wearing it you don't feel anything on your head even even on the long sessions that or back-to-back -back sessions that I end up doing at times on track. One other feature, it has a tab for you to keep your helmet uh, visor open to a certain level. Not a lot of race helmets have that option. Uh, the Bell doesn't have it. The AGV Pista GPRR does not have that. It's either open or closed. This you can actually set it up and keep it at a certain level. Overall aerodynamics wise this is really good. It's got these spoilers in the end. It also comes with certain grooves over here. Create a certain vortex. It should help you with aerodynamics and the sound. I've tried all kinds of race helmets and they're never quiet and you have to wear ear plugs when you're using them so so yeah these were these are my two helmets this is again mostly my track helmet now and then of course for my street needs i have my uh the bell i i do also ha own a couple of other helmets i own a agv k6 for time being i did sell my agv pista gpr i don't know why i really like the helmet but i did sell it because i was just i just had too many helmets at home so there you have it guys. These are the two of my favorite helmets that I have. The difference between these helmets overall, very minimal when it comes to the top line helmets. It really boils down to what your preference is and what really you like. So that's all I had for today. Please drop in a comment. Please do like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for your time once again. And till the next time, ride safe always. Peace. This Bell Raystar is made out of carbon fiber. Well, carbon fiber. Cars for hire. Carbon fiber. <laughs> Cars for hire.